If you don't mind your hands being degloved, your wrists snapped, your knees bent backwards and your head being crushed by a lorry tyre, then motorbikes are undoubtedly the most exciting form of transport invented by man. And yet for those one plate short of a picnic, driving from A to B just isn't enough. This is where we find the FIM Road Racing World Championship Grand Prix, otherwise known as MotoGP. A motorsport series allowing man and machine come together like some weird Japanese anime. And like every popular sport, MotoGP of course has a licensed game. And that licensed game is... Valentino Rossi... The Game. Clearly, seller taping a famous person's name to the front of your game box increases sales. And with something as potentially impersonal as driving a motorbike around a track after track after track in a game, it's nice that Milestone has used this license as a way to flesh out the single player and make it feel more involving for the more casual racer. Somewhat strangely, on top of the MotoGP, the game also includes some driving in the form of rally and drift events which uh, was a little bit of a surprise, but again, it builds the single player and makes the game a sort of pick a mix of driving content. It's the single player, the progression through the single player and the variety in the single player that really makes MotoGP stand out. It's another one of those games that takes a sort of weird TV perspective of the sport and then captures that and places it in a game. The closest thing I can think of are the previous MotoGP games, but also games like Codemasters Formula 1 titles, which sure, don't have the most realistic or deep physics, but played with a gamepad, perhaps with some assists on, it allows people to take part, kind of, in the sport that they enjoy watching. Visually, the game doesn't exactly blow your eyeballs off, especially for an Xbox One, PlayStation 4 or recent PC title. Now the graphics are functional and there's some really nice animations especially whilst you're leaning in and out of corners, but the shadows, lighting, textures and effects are about as titillating as a supermarket vegetable aisle. And unfortunately the sounds are very much the same, in that at no point do you feel as if you've got a device containing multiple explosions right next to your testicles. Which is unfortunate because sound is something that really helps draw you in, give a sense of speed and danger to driving games. AI in the title I'd say is acceptable, but they do tend to slow down a bit too much and suffer from the same AI problems that seem to be endemic to every single driving game made. That said, if you're not playing on the hardest settings and not expecting a hardcore simulator, the AI do put up a nice challenge and they can be quite entertaining to race with. Annoyingly though, your bike can be toppled by the slightest of breezes, yet if you drive 130 miles an hour into an AI, it doesn't affect them at all. The handling and physics in the game are interesting. Now, it does have a good degree of depth to it and there are times where you feel like you're driving a real bike. But for the most part, it's a little bit sluggish and the bikes lack the response of what you'd probably expect from the real thing. Also, the game tries to do this weird mix between realistic and arcadey handling and sometimes you find yourself tripping over the bikes and not being able to work out what the game really wants you to do to get the most out of them. If you're playing with assists on, you won't notice any of this and you'll be able to breeze through it and enjoy the game. If you turn all the assists off and try and approach it more as a simulator, I think things can get quite frustrating and it just doesn't have that hook that hardcore sim fans such as myself look for to justify spending lots of time playing the game. Milestone should certainly be commended though for allowing people to pick the driver's riding style, allowing plenty of options to approach the bikes in different ways as well as having full setups that genuinely affect how the bikes handle. The game also has a really nice guided setup menu where you put in how the bike's handling and how you'd like it to change and the game suggests to you what you need to do to get the improvement you want. In terms of performance and stability, the game runs really well and there's no issues with crashes or glitches rearing their ugly head. The final question is, uh, should you buy Valentino Rossi the game or is it worth getting? Well, I'd say if you're a hardcore simulator fan, no, it's not really a hardcore simulator and I think you'll find the handling somewhat irritating. 
If, on the other hand, though, you are a fan of MotoGP or motorbikes in general, where, let's face it, there's hardly any even semi-decent motorbike games, then you probably will want to pick it up and you probably will get a lot of enjoyment playing through the single player, racing with familiar drivers and experiencing the bikes that you've lost it over. I also think completionist gamers will genuinely enjoy playing through the single player, unlocking the content and doing the various challenges. Simply put, this is probably the best motorbike game that Milestone have produced. Following on from this review, I'm going to upload some single player events and I'll talk through them. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'll try and address them along with some more gameplay footage. And uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and like the video if you enjoyed this. I will see you very soon in our next video. Goodbye.